Okay, so Peter, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That'd be bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much. Again, my name is Peter Yu, and um, when Annette asked me to come and speak, we're brainstorming, and I had this grandiose, you know, Bonson brainstorming with uh, her and Mike Novo, and we could do this, and we could do this, and we realized, well, we only have about an hour. <laughs> so um, I had to kind of twiddle it and uh, twiddle it down to what I felt was really essential whether you're doing um, commercial work, studio work, whether you're doing any type of you know, portrait work, architecture, there is a common underlying theme to anything that's related to photography and art. Um, and so, and this has kind of been my passion. I've actually traveled all over, the, I travel all over the country to speak at uh, state conventions. Um, and I, I get asked to speak and judge um, all over the country. And I get to see a lot, um, a lot of great, um, inspiring things, but there's also a lot of challenging things um, for multiple reasons, right? And so for me, not only is growth important personally, uh, create uh, as a creative person, but also it's very essential for my business too. And so those things, um, The reality is um, we all have a collection of experiences and education and we all benefit and the fact that you're here is awesome because for me I'm kind of an old school person where I want to be around people. Um, living room in my underwear, you know, figuratively I don't really do that, but people <laughs> sitting in their underwear, listening and getting education online is great and has a place to some extent. But I tell you um, from my story that you will not learn as much and as quickly and as accurately and correctly as you will when you're in a place like this with other people, sharing ideas. And so I just want to, again, just um, that, that's how I thank you, thank you, thank you for not only Kelly, man, I know, I know Bill a long time and I know Annette. And, uh, you know, Jerry and Michael, you guys have an awesome board. And oh, I just, one of the things I will say to, you know, Calumet's Horn is it's tough for the vendors. I could travel all over the country and vendors, uh, that vendor money is dwindling um, exponentially because they're not supported. And so I, I want to just encourage you to continue to uh, support Bill. Um, he has a great passion. He's a great customer service guy and you know he's been on a very you know interesting road and so definitely and social media right it doesn't work with just him tooting the horn right it's all of us that is that's what social media is that you just go on and share and like and you know brag on you know people like Bill Calumet CPS and whoever else you know so um, thank you again for just having me so I just want to start with a little colorful quote. Um, be not afraid of growing slowly, but be afraid of only standing still. And that's kind of the essence of my um, talk tonight, is that if you're not growing, then you're dying. And so one of the things, if you don't get offended by anything that I say, I'm very, I, I laugh like crazy. Um, I'm very fun to hang out with, as you'll see if you come to Sally's or wherever we're going. Um, but I'm also very real. I'm not like one of those Facebook people that says, oh, like, like, love, love, love. I mentor many, as a judge, I get a lot of inquiries. You know, um, I'm very involved with PPA, um, as uh, Annette mentioned, a um, couple things. And th when I say this, it's not titles and stuff. I'm, I'm not one of those people that, you know, has to stand on a podium um, wearing, you know, PPA. They have these what's called medallions or junk that we wear, wear around that. Um, <laughs> um, 
Um, and we do that because only PPA bylaws say that if I'm at a PPA function, I have to wear that junk. Um, and I'm not minimizing that. It's, those are awards that I've worked very hard to achieve. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, that's not, I don't, those are achievements, milestones that I've created and that I've grown from in my past and I treasure them, but those are things that I'm, I'm on to the next thing. And so, and that's all part of the growth. And so that's why I say, you know, you're either growing or dying, you know, there's no stagnant idle, you know. And so the, one of the things we'll talk about is how do you measure growth? Right, especially in the creative process and art and photography. Um, and I'll share a couple of things about that as we move along. I want to make this, uh, let me just talk about Steal Like an Artist, um, love the book. If you haven't read it, you need to read it. Um, and the ess essence of the book is be true to yourself. Be who you are as an artist, discover who you are as an artist. Um, and it's very important that you do that because if you don't develop your own style, what's going to happen is, oh, you're going to be the latest fad. You're going to be, oh, I like that thing. Oh, I'm going to chase that for a little while. Oh, I'm, I like this. I'm going to chase this for a lot a while. A lot of people, they go to seminars, and I don't see as much now, but many years ago, you know, people would sell actions and business plans and all this other stuff, and then people would buy it, and all of a sudden, all right, now I'm going to be like... Julian Jeffrey Woods, you know, that because I got everything that they sell, right? Or I, I'm going to be like, you know, Tom Rouse, you know, just because I have all of his quote unquote actions or whatever. I don't see that as much now, but it's very important that you develop your own style. A couple, couple little disclaimers before we actually jump right into it. Every time I go speak everywhere, there's always a broad audience, right? Broad audience mean not only demographically, but skill level. And this is going to be very interactive. I'd like you, by the initial start of this, it didn't turn out, it didn't seem like you guys were all, uh, you know, hand raising types. But I'm going to pick on people um, if you don't, if you don't uh, raise your hands. <laughs> Good teacher. Um, so there's a lot of skill level. Some people are, let me just do a quick demographic. Now that I don't assume that everyone's in business either. So, um, if you're not in business, then it, it, um, when, you've when you're like really serious, how many years you've been like really seriously into it? If you're not sure, then I would say just kind of guess a little bit conservative on the low side. Who's been in, 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 in it for about one to five years? Anybody? Okay, that's good. Um, five to ten years. All right. 10 to 20 years. Anyone past that? All right. That's, that's pretty good. Normally, I get a lot of people that are kind of high in the, uh, but this is not a state convention, so that might be a little bit different. So we have a lot of different skill levels. Um, I, I don't assume that you know um, all aspects of lighting, butterfly lighting, split lighting, you know, what an 8 to 1 light ratio, 3 to 1 light ratio is. I don't, know, I don't assume that any of you know like everything completely. I don't. But the whole point of this is start where you're at, right? I'm meeting you, I'm speaking to you even though it's a one-to-many relationship. For each of you, it's where you're at right now and you need to start there. Um, and so that's kind of the thing, varying skill sets and maturity level. And it's okay to say, you know what, I don't know that and if you, you know, if you have questions at any time, raise your hand, don't be bashful. The worst thing that could happen, as, as I say, every time I go out and speak and judge is I get paid or I, get, I am called here to do a specific job. If you leave with a question unanswered, that's bad on you and that's your loss, right? If I can answer that question. So just, uh, and again, for me, it's your next steps. If you've been in the industry or in this business for 20 to 30 years, um, you still have next steps. You do. Maybe it's reinventing yourself. Maybe because there are some young people that are new in this business that are kicking butt. They are. They have new ideas. They're fresh. They're energetic. 
they don't have the experience, but almost that experience is almost ignorance <laughs> and they don't care. They just keep on, you know, plugging along, chugging. And um, so that you guys have next steps. For the young people that don't have all the um, experience, have a lot to know, make sure you get your fundamentals solid. It's super essential um, that you get that. Um, so that's, that's my goal. Again, it's, it's gonna be interactive. We're gonna go through a couple exercises. I want to make it more interactive, but um, uh, I don't think time will allow, but we'll see how things go. Um, so raise, raise your hands, I'll pick on you. Generalizations, don't be offended by any generalizations. I, generalization, generalizations you always have to make to, to kind of prove, uh, to make a point. Um, but I'm not trying to typecast anybody. Um, you know, whether it's male, gender, whether it's experience level, whatever. I, I don't I mean to prove, and I don't know all the answers, um, and I will be the first to admit that. Um, uh, I, I, in PPA world, um, who's a PPA member? I'm just kind of curiosity, okay. Um, <coughs> of you, how many members, how, how many of you have been PPA members for more than five years? Okay, so, so I'm going to talk a little bit about PPA because that's kind of the engine that I really have seen people grow the quickest. And I'm glad, I'm glad Annette brought me out here to talk a little bit about that because mm -hmm. it really does. I mean, I, I met with Michael Novo and many, I, maybe a dozen of your CPS members and I did a little tour of imaging of PPA and I hope it was enlightening. You know, mm -hmm. um, Christine, Christine, Christina was there. Um, I can't remember all the names, but we went through the print exhibit, we went through all of this, and you get a different experience when you actually get to see that. Otherwise, it's just convention, right? I remember I went to WPPI before, and so I've been in business for about, since 2012. 2000, I, and I was doing well. I'm one of those overachiever, oh, here's my generalization of stereotyping, <laughs> Overachiever, overachiever Asian dude, you know, that was gonna rock the world. And I was doing that, and so in my world, right? But I, until I got introduced to PPA, which is, which is about end of 2009, so 10 years, I'm thinking, oh, I'm making great money, I'm doing great, I'm kicking butt, I'm happy, you know, things are good. But you don't, I didn't know the other side, I didn't know there was more. Um, and in 2009, I saw my print, first print competition. Um, I'm a technical, by trade, I'm an engineer, so I'm super technical, right? Everything with image, you know, image manipulation and even shooting f-stops and all this other light ratios, like I could, I got the equation derived in my head backwards and forwards and that's how I am. Um, and so the, the, the thing was, I didn't know there was a whole new, another world when I first, saw my first PPA print competition, and this was a regional, so it was kind of a big thing. Man, it blew my mind. I'm like, wow. I didn't even, and some of those score, like the top 10 of, back then it was like Illinois and Indiana, but the top 10 of those two states, I mean, that rocked my world. I didn't know images could be made that well. And I, the creativity, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, so you, we're always, um, learning to grow. I, I'm always honest and straightforward, as gentle as I can be, but I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up, if you want it like that. Um, and I'm on your side. I do want people to s succeed. That's why people ask me to speak and judge all over the country. One of the things, judging is very tough. I will say, why do I have to, why do I, why do I have to be valid, validated, right? Why do I have to have an image up there for someone to tell me, you know, if it's good, crappy, um, if it's awesome? Um, and there's some truth to that, but you know what? The, the reality is we, won't, we never grow until we actually get, put ourselves out there. Because you know what? Your mom, your parents, your, even your clients will say, wow, that's good. But the, uh, the PPA has a system um, in their, print competition, image competition, um, that really takes, it's not, competition is a little bit mis, uh, of a misnomer, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But it really does make you grow. So I, I, I got, oh, PPA. So before that, 
um, from 2000, first 10 years, went to WPPI. I would see signs like, welcome to WPPI along with your closest 14,000 friends. You know, you got 14,000 photographers invading Las Vegas, right? Um, and I went there every year, didn't miss, because I wanted to learn. I was hungry. That's how, that's how I'm wired. But it wasn't until I met PPA, a couple of very key members that really kind of took me by the hand and mentored me. And you, from 2010 to now, my growth, maybe you know, in business terms, I was growing the first 10 years, maybe 20, 10, 15, 20% year, year over year growth, right? Um, if you talk about monetizing business, stuff like that. In last, from every year, from 2010 to 2015, I would say I've been growing two to 300% every year in terms of my creativity, in terms of my image making, in terms of my, not so much my business, but that potential is there. And it's, it's totally rocked my world. Um, and I'll go into a lot of the details. So let, we'll give the old college try. We're all, you know, we all like to look at images. Tell me about that image. And that's all I'll say. Raise your hand. We don't have all night. Okay, go for it. It makes you think Taipei or Dubai or Shanghai or something. Okay. Some big islands. Okay. Something in the interior of one. Okay. Um, it's a great angle and it gives me a kind of alien side line. Okay. Okay. A leading line kind of going to infinity. Okay. Okay, good. Symmetrical. Symmetrical. Good. Good. Those are all good points. So there, there is no wrong answer. I just want us to bring to the table what we do because this is how we do. Every time I go judge, I'm sitting there in a room looking at hundreds and hundreds of images, and I got to put a quote unquote score on the image. So go ahead. A couple more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how would you how 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 are you guessing that uh, there's a mirror? Well, just, it, it, it could be. It could be a mirror. Okay. I don't know. It's okay. hard hard to say. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. <laughs> it's not. You'll have to trust me. <laughs> it's not. But the monitor doesn't seem to be calibrated. So the density is a lot lower than you would expect. Trust me, it is. It's a little high. Yeah, here it is definitely. And I, would, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you can only judge what you see, what's in front of you. So absolutely. But I'll just qualify that. <laughs> because the projector is not. Go ahead. You also have sort of an interesting visual level on Tonner going here. It sounds okay. like it could be the nature of the skyscraper, or it could be the inside of the hole of a ship or something. Okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, so good, good. Now we're getting our, you know, juices swung here. Let's do another one. <clears throat> what? It's way hot. Okay. Uh, trust me, it is not way hot. It, take it down, just, in, well, I know, go ahead. It, you can only say that, but um, I trust that. But it, it's, it's probably about um, two stops, easily two stops over on this projector right now. So, but I appreciate that. I'm not trying to justify anything. Go ahead, anybody else? Cool shot. Cool shot? Okay. Mm -hmm. It looks like it was layered with the paper thing. The paper thing. Yeah. Texture. Texture. texture, okay, there you go. Okay. Attitude. Attitude, okay, nice. Now we're getting, all right, now we're getting somewhere. All right? Uh, vintage. Yeah, vintage, okay, cool. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with me, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So now, go, go ahead. I like the intensity in his eyes. Yeah, right? If your, your, where does your eyes go? Right to his eyes, right? That expression, that mood, even for such a young, cute boy. <laughs> in the back, there was a little... I was gonna say the connection with the camera with the husband. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So where I'm eventually leading us 
to the place is how do we talk about an image, right? We said, I like it, there's some cool stuff going on, there's some texture, but I want you to, before we start, before I start moving on to other images, and we started, we're getting better at the second image, we talked about expression, right? We talked about connection, so even the image before, we, someone was talking about leading lines. Um, I want you to start thinking of training your mind to how you talk and see images. It's very important as artists to see that. To not only visual, preconceive and visualize images um, that are also before us, but also before you even shoot it. Um, and that's, that's, again, that's very essential. Any other final comments? Yeah, you saw the texture in there, you saw the connection. And for what you saw, it was overblown blown out, and I would agree, if I'm looking at this on this projector, it is definitely hot. The exposure, there would be an exposure exposure issue, absolutely. And I, I think there's such a big separation of his face from the background. Great, good. Yeah, that's all very important, good. Death. Death? Yes. Death, Death? okay. Elaborate. Let's talk a little bit more about what, what does that mean? It's a beautiful dot because the lighting makes you see all the different textures. Okay. Maybe it's a beautiful death. But you're right. But you're right. Absolutely. The lighting is essential. You're, you're, and that's one of the things that people don't see or appreciate. Even our clients don't appreciate the death. And if you thought that lighting, flat lit, it would be nothing. Right? Absolutely. But maybe it's a beautiful death. You, you're talking about a beautiful death because of the nature of the, the, the technical excellence of the lighting, how well lit it is. Maybe your connotation of that is, wow, that poor thing just fell over and it's a horrid death. I don't know what the story of this flower or this thing is, right? Any other comments? Is it your photo? What is that? Is it your photo? Yours? This one is not. I have another similar one that I did shoot. Michael Barton? This is a Michael... Mm, no, this is not a Michael Barton. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Martin, if you don't know, um, has, um, is one of my mentors, an extremely good friend. Um, so is Tom Rouse and several others, um, Wendy Bugler. Um, and he has... Michael shoots a lot of things that are mundane. He, in fact, his one year, his challenge was, I just want to go out, find something on this street, shoot it, and then score it 100 at the print competition. Very few people can do that. Um, and he does an incredible job. So he has, you, 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 you notice that we'll talk about style too, because he says, is that Michael Barton? <laughs> because his style it also impacts other people, including me, because he's one of my mentors. Um, but, it, you know, over the years, as I kind of developed, we're always shooting each other. He, and he's, he's always telling me, don't ever doubt, shoot me. <laughs> he said he had a flower shop next door that threw away flowers. That's right. So he shot a lot. Of yep, he did, flowers. yep, absolutely. He did shoot a lot of flowers. In fact, he has an, he got what's called, in the PPA world, is an ASP fellowship. It's, those guys in there are literally some of the best photographers in the world. I, I can say that. With, and I, I don't know many of them. Um, and he, he got his ASP fellowship on flowers. <laughs> we all made fun of him, but he did. So there was a question. Uh, well, this says, yeah, I mean, uh, te uh, technically, did he, did he take just a, like a black background? He didn't do it in Photoshop or anything. He just basically photographed, I just had, a, had the environment blacked out, you know, probably with some cloth and, and then lit it from above. I can see they kind of lit from, from like above the piece. Yeah, you know, I can see where the light hits it and stuff. Is that technically how we achieve that uh, photo possible? Um, sure. Um, that's one way you can do it. Yeah. Right. But what's another way? Obviously, what? So we'll just talk a little bit about that because I think it's important for growth. Um, so obviously, the background is black. It is black. D Max is 100% on this thing. You can't. Doesn't look like it. In the print judging world, we'd say, oh, it's a little, uh, 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 not, 
not be maxed out here. Um, but how, how can, how, what's another, let me, uh, just to be direct, um, what's another way to get that background black, even <coughs> if it's not purely black? Maybe you would uh, uh, be in a salt box okay. that's gridded, fresh. Sure. Uh, making sure that the light doesn't light the background. Okay. And keeping your subject or whatever away from the background. Okay. And then amping up the splash so far that the background might just fade to nothing. High speed sync. High speed sync? High or fast speed sync. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. I would, I don't think that's necessary. Um, I, the you don't have to shoot that. I can shoot. I've shot these things at like fortieth of a second, so that's not totally accurate. I know where you're going. Go ahead. One more. Outside in your balcony, it's dark outside, and your flash is really high. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's like anything else, and like especially Photoshop. There's you know dozens, couple dozens of way to do it. The key point that since I went, we went down this rabbit trail is really the, the, the stop difference between the lighting, the subject, and the background, right? Right? So if you have this at F16, if you shot that at F16, and you have that background and it's gray, like, you know, 20% gray, 18% gray, and you shot that where there's five, eight, ten, ten stops, five, eight, six, seven stops difference, that thing will go black, right? So you don't have to. So, and you can do it in Photoshop. I, I guess there's another way you can cut that out and, you know, drop that on a black draft up. But that's the whole, that would be a lot of unnecessary work, right? If you know, again, that's where the fundamentals come in. That's good. I'm glad we all got to share. And you know what? And the, that's how we all learn. You know, and so I appreciate that. Um, so we'll just move on. Um, I think this one, these are all, not all, but uh, some of these images are uh, my friends. And I wanted, the reason I brought some of my uh, friends' images is because we have, I don't shoot dogs. I don't shoot my clients' dogs this way, even if I got a job this way. Um, <laughs> But, and that's why it's good to see different people's style, right? And I, even if I saw it, even, I can do it. I can pull it off, but I, I still wouldn't do it because that's not my thing, right? Um, but it's, it's a nice image to talk about. I think this one, she called it, how cute, was, how cute is measured, right? Anything? Any thoughts? Very cute. What? Very cute. Very cute, okay. It's very playful. It's what? Playful. Playful, okay. Okay. Um, the weight thing matches the, the scale. scale. The scale matches the, the one in the back. Yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's all. Yep, absolutely. One more. I don't want to. Almost like a painting. Uh, almost like a painting. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, one more. You you had your it hand. Sort of raises the question: Is it a dog? It's okay. Funny that way. Okay. Yeah. So I I I got to this. I'm kind of a big dog person. Yep. Yep. And that's. This is a, one of the things I like to do this um, whenever I talk about print competition or whenever I talk about images is we all see different things, right? But, and where I'm going hopefully very quickly is we need a common language, okay? And that said, oh, it's very cute. Okay, what does that really mean? I'm picking on that because she's a good friend. But what does that really mean, right? Have you told me anything about that image in terms of its artistry or in terms of this technical excellence, how that image is created, yeah. right? And that's something that we need to start thinking about. And that's part of growing. I, I need us to sharpen um, our vocabulary, sharpen our observation skills, and that's all part of growth. That is my goal. Well, the very fact you say it's cute mm -hmm. means that the photographer accomplished their task of you focusing in sure. on the subject. Sure. Okay, yeah, right. I mean, what jumps out at me there is that uh, something I'm very fond of is sort of unexpected juxtapositions. Ah, like yeah. You don't normally think of a dog in a scale. Yes. Just like, you know, you think of, you know, my studio partner's done a bunch of shots of, like, you know, 
brides, you know, in urinals, you know, there's just things that, <laughs> you know, take things that don't normally go together. That's right. You don't normally think of someone weighing. That's know, right. Balance, you know, like that. That's like, right. It's not natural, like right? But again, that's one of the reasons, and all images that you enter in pro competition, I'm a big, I'm, titles, the storytelling <laughs> aspect is very huge. In fact, I've, Ever since I started print competition, you enter four images at uh, international print competition, and an a score of 80 gets you what's called a merit. That's what I considered, that's what's considered a work of a master photographer. You get 13 of those, then you become, you get this master of photography title, basically, this degree. So you get 13 of those. Um, and. The title is very important. Storytelling aspect. How cute is measured? How cute is measured? Perfect title for this thing, right? Um, anybody want to talk about this one? There you go. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I like it. You guys are participating. Honestly, my first impression, I'd walk up to if there's a thing on the wall, I'd be like, what? Yeah. It, it, my eye goes everywhere. So right. Like, it, where do I start? I, I see eyes, the tree, what the string, are those kites? I yeah. see letters. Yeah. It's just that's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's face. Yeah. You see a face in there. And how well? How how, how is there a dimension to that face? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn good. This. I mean, this is. I mean, it's one thing to light a face. It's like, okay, I can light a face, three straight up or headshot, three to one, four to one light ratio, blah, blah, eight to one light ratio, depending on what you're shooting. But try doing this. <laughs> try pulling this off. Any other comments? Did you know what the aperture was on this one? <laughs> <laughs> it was in camera, actually. <laughs> Any other thoughts? I mean, don't be afraid. I mean, I, I appreciate Steve's comments like, what the heck is that? You know, because you know what? Sometimes when I'm sitting on a panel, I, I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> you know what? Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you just wonder if it's, it's a Photoshop image or it's a photograph of a piece of art. <laughs> oh, oh, so you photographed a piece of art? Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. No. It's, really, it's a photograph that really makes you think. Yeah. Yeah, it's called symbol trade. This is a, a piece done by Tom Rouse. This guy, I mean, there's when when I, judging is supposed to be anonymous. If I'm a if I'm sitting on a pa judging panel and I know the maker, I I do the symbol, which means DQ. I know the image. I can't judge it fairly. Um, images like this, you get uh, Ben Shirk, you get Ro uh, Richard Sturdivant, you get. Um, Tom Rouse, you get several other names, William Branson, Tim Kelly. You're like, oh, that looks like a Tim Kelly. <laughs> that looks like a Tom Rouse. You look at this and you're like, when you see images like this, and because he's also a very good friend of mine, a mentor, you're like, no one can pull that off. <laughs> Only Tom can. But I don't know with, you know, definitively that is Tom's. So I have to judge it. Um, it is not... It is not a photograph of a painting, a master artist, but this, this is the, the, his style. This is crazy. And, and a lot of times this is called symbol tree. There are, you, can, you can't appreciate, you need to see this large print, you need to, in a museum and like study it. And even if you sat there for hours and hours and days, you will not get it. Most people, some of the, even the people in the ASP fellowship, I told you how, you know, kind of they're the upper crust. They're like, I don't even, I don't even understand half the stuff you do. That's what they tell Tom Rouse. Um, they, and he's like, what kind of drugs are you on? Um, because it, it, it's crazy, it's craziness. Any thoughts? something I hang in my bedroom. Okay, that's fine. That's a legitimate an a comment. Particularly in my bathroom. Okay, go ahead. I have to 
pose a question at what, at what point do you, especially in the judging, at what point do you no longer consider, consider photography but uh, Photoshop that's for law, or like an expert? No. Okay. I will answer that after you give me a comment. <laughs> it, it, looks, it looks fake to me. I mean, it looks like you, you can see that it was done in, in, in Photoshop. Because there's a lot of Photoshop. What about the previous? So is this. Right. All yeah. in Photoshop. You know how many elements there are? I, I, I'm not sure. A lot. And I would have lost Probably a hundred elements in there. I, I would pose the same question on, on that end. Sure, yeah. But, 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 and I, I'm getting us to kind of evoke emotion, right? That's what art is supposed to do at some point. If I sit there, the worst thing on a judging panel for me, and not only me, on a panel is, oh, that's cute. Uh, so basically, 79 is no merit, 80 is a merit. 80 is one of those golden merits. Once you score an 80, that's considered work of a master photographer. You get 13 of those, you become a master photographer, right? And so, I forgot um, what I was, um, got sidetracked here. Um, but that's, that's something that we have to kind of, kind of broaden our scope. You may not like it, and that's fine. I, I would never put that in my living room or bedroom or whatever. That's fine, but can you talk about this? Can you appreciate it for what it is, right? And I think that's sometimes, and I, I, I don't think this way. Very, 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 very few, and in fact, probably the only person that thinks this way is Tom. Um, I'm getting us to also open up our blinders a little bit, right? It's like, yeah, I don't like that. I don't like this. It's all heavy, heavily di digitally manipulated. I get that, it's painted. She took that and that and that, right? It took cheap. cheap? Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Storybook. It's what? Like a children's story. Storybook? Yeah, illustration, right? Everything about children. Okay. Comparing the two, yeah. this one is going to be more commercially successful mm -hmm. than the previous. Sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's got a broader audience. Right. Right. Five year old girls. Yep. There's an awful lot of opposite reactions to these images. The, That's an interesting the light tree one, I put it in your living room. Yeah. Uh, the Symbol the, tree. The fairy and the unicorn belongs in a Hallmark card, maybe. Not to sure. Sure. And I will tell you, these are all amazingly done images. And the, the, how you put these things together, and again, it's that's why it's tough for some of us like judges to actually sit there, because we someone someone put hours and hours, days, years into some of this stuff. Same thing with this, right? If this was your work, and I would say, oh, I don't like it. Seventy nine. <laughs> you know, that's not something that we can do, right? And that's 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 and that's something that we have to be. That, that, that we're trained specifically to understand. And that's why on a judging panel, there's seven judges, six judges plus one JC, what's called a jury chair. And each one is, has expertise in architecture, commercial, all kinds of stuff. Some, some are master painters. Um, and so, you know, I, I didn't answer your question, I'll answer your question and move on. And so there's basically two categories in PPA. One's called photographic open, which is supposed to be the traditional photo photography, right? Not a lot of, not as much heavily man digital man manipulation as the master artist. The master artist, artist category is all, how, how much can you wow me with kind of your Photoshop expertise? But you will see this in, uh, you will see this in um, uh, photographic open but I still need to appreciate it as art, right? Whether you're doing mixed media, you know, whether you're doing on canvas or whatever, whatever media it is, that's the thing, beauty of art, right? And that's, that's her style. This is a, a, one of the best uh, painters and photographers, um, she, uh, um, Sandra Pierce from Florida. Um, talk about this image real quick and we'll just kind of keep, keep moving. <laughs> Unrealistic. Unrealistic, why? It's like overly saturated. Okay. At least on the screen. Okay. 
the, the, the saturation is a little bumped up, um, but again, I know the image, so I wouldn't say knowing the image, I, I would say it's not as saturated as on the screen. Go yeah, ahead. Colors were shifted. Colors were shifted. Okay. I, I will blame. I, I I'm not defending anything. I know what the image looks like, um, and I appreciate those comments. Those are totally valid comments. Exposure issues, color shift, because it's not a calibrated projector. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I would say um, it feels powerful, and yeah. you're, I can feel like you know the strength because okay. of the um, the lines, the key lines. Okay. 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 Go ahead. I mean, I mean, I, first, I think these are all beautiful, and I'm struck by the conversation where there seems to be a bias against you know manipulated photos, or you know, at least you know in this conversation, yeah. which to me. Things like, yeah, that's a problem if you're taking pictures for the New York Times mm -hmm. and you know you can't manipulate those because you're presenting this as you know an accurate reflection of reality. Mm -hmm. But complaining about an image, well that doesn't look, you know, you know, the colors look off or or the, the one before, you know, the Hallmark or whatever. Mm -hmm. That's you know, that's like complaining about like you don't like Picasso because mm -hmm. exactly. it's not as realistic as, sure. as Rembrandt. Sure. Or you know, it's just it's 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 yeah. art. Right. And you know, just again, photography is just another form of art. It's just a question of you know, what are you trying sure. to accomplish? Yeah, sure. you're trying to get an accurate representation of what that mm -hmm. role in the horse looked like. Sure. And you fail. Sure. If you're trying to create a work of art, then you you clearly succeeded. Sure. Sure. And I appreciate that. And all, uh, and I'm not. If if there's some comments that I would say, and I think I made one comment to you. If there was a comment that I say, ah, oh, no, that's not really accurate. Um, or I, I'm going to tell you it's straightforward. But again, that's, the, that's part of our visual learning, visual literacy. And that's where, I, that's where I'm trying to get us to go, right? This is your dose in visual literacy to expand your mind, to grow and think out of the box. And you're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, any one more? Okay, you didn't speak. <laughs> Happy color, depth, texture. When I look at it, nice. Portrait, Beautiful. I think the artist. Good. Season yeah. One. Three season three dimension. Yeah. You mentioned a lot of great comments. Texture, you depth, how the leading lines take you right down there. And that's exactly some of the talks. But I can't sit on a judging panel and say, Oh, I don't like it or I think it's uh, it's cute. You know, where did my this cute go? Um, it's cute, right? That doesn't mean anything. I can't put a score, I can't put a it in a category just saying it's cute. But when I talk about texture, depth, the lighting, the color harmony, when I talk about that, that actually is meaningful, right? And then the other judges will actually listen. And that's how we convey to our potential clients. That's how we talk. We should be talking to each other. That's how we should be talking as artists. A lot of this is lost in the, with the newer, you know, younger crowd. And even with the older people. I mean, there's not... And I don't expect you guys to be speaking like judges or have the depth, um, but that's how we grow. And this is kind of exercise. Um, okay. I see that there's like the frame is some, somewhat the, the same color, some of the colors inside. Yeah. The Good. And I saw that a lot with the buttons. Good. Good. Yeah. Presentation, right? Yeah. When we frame an image, you know, that's why that it's framing makes a difference. You're giving a polished work, and I'm glad that is awesome. Presentation is a huge thing, right? If you don't present it to your client, polished framework, you get, you go to um, some high-end jeweler, which is, you know, Tiffany's, you know, buy your fiance this awesome $10,000 ring, and it comes in a cardboard box, or they just drop it in a little manila folder and say, have a nice day. Strong bag. How would that how would that make you feel? And then and then you take that brown bag and then kneel before your fiance and say, Will you marry me? I don't think that'll go over well, right? Now, maybe you go down to McDonald's, right? And you you expect that, right? And so that's another thing to think about. Um question of Yeah. Was it framed? Digitally. In, in the uh, image, or was it actually a picture of the frame image? No, this is digitally matted. Okay. Yeah. There are, 
Yeah, so there's a picture like, you know, I mean, I do that a lot of times, and I don't see other people doing it. I wonder, then do you frame it also? I mean, I use it for online. Oh, you mean for a print competition? A lot of these images are print competition images. So presentation is one of the 12 elements. And so you'll see that, and it just looks, I, I, I should have inserted an image without one, but if you take it out, it, it would take away from the impact. It would. It's nicely, uh, the, the, the key line, the stroke around the image, um, is kind of like a, a kind of a matting, exactly. Um, and that's, look at the colors, all, it all flows, and you'll see a lot of that. Go ahead. Well, I think there's another aspect to this, that picture, and I'm asking myself as a photographer, sure. um, where did this photographer position himself to first, A, find the light at the end of the tunnel, right? B, it's just a road, but it's not just a road. He right. actually positioned or she positioned it for themselves so that they had the leading lines. Right. So exactly. to deconstruct it in that way backwards exactly. to position ourselves as photographers exactly. to think of those things as we exactly. photograph it. Exactly. And so this is more literal than symbol free, but the concept, the practice of visualization, the concept of coming up with a concept and actually being able to see that and tweaking that. And, you know, there's always going to be some manipulation. I, I remember when I first, in 2010, I was talking to uh, a past PPA president, uh, one of my, uh, I, I respect him not only as an artist, but also a, more importantly as a person. And so I, I saw my first print competition, I was like baffled at how, how amazing these images were. And I'm like, so is this all a recent digital phenomenon where, you know, some of this saturation and all this other stuff? It's like, no, it's like they've been doing that since the quote unquote dark ages, you know, using a lot of techniques. Now, you, if you screw up, that's a lot more expensive instead of throwing away a layer. Oh, throw away the layer I screwed up, right? Redoing it. It's a, that process is a lot more expensive. But everything that I, sh you know, that I showed you, they, they did that in the darkroom days, to that extent. You mean Ant's lab was a straight out of camera? <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly, absolutely. His magic, where was his magic, right? Well, I mean, but he yeah. did with the zone system and everything he understood. Exactly. He knew how to get the exposure he needed, but yeah, it was a That's lot right. of post. That's right. Right, absolutely. It was a combination. Yeah. And he, that, knew, he knew on both ends what that, he had to do. He knew the entire spectrum. Right. And that's why when and that's why one of the areas of growth for us, you know, me included, yeah, who cares if I have this master photographer, craftsman degree, whatever. You can call me whatever you want. I'm always pushing the envelope, always trying to grow. Initial capture, right? Well, visualization, initial capture what I'm gonna do with that execution of that visualization in post, whether it's in the light room, dark room, Photoshop, whatever it is, and then printing, right? All very important. In fact, when, before, it, <coughs> when I was getting my master's of photography degree from PPA, I insisted that I print everything because that was part of the process, very crucial to me. It's like I, I didn't want to go just enter digital images. I needed to print it, and I needed to make sure that I saw the density. I looked at the images, looked at the densities in the images. Very crucial, very crucial. Um, that's some of the challenges of the digital age where a lot of people just want CDs. But for us, as we're kind of continuing to grow and push the envelope, very essential. And I'm glad. You guys said a lot of great things you uh, you know even especially your last comment you can and that's where i want us to take go ahead what i see now is the yeah. rule of thirds yeah. great right <laughs> exactly that's right composition right now we're talking leading lines composition now you guys are talking about meaningful tangible stuff now it's just not cute right, <laughs> oh, right? Cute. <laughs> no yeah <laughs> it still can be cute right but there has to be something meaningful. There has something impactful, right? And that's, that's the goal. It wasn't shot like that in the camera. They cropped it. Wow, amazing. But the maker pre-visualized the composition in the head already. She didn't, she didn't need any grid, grid lines. So what makes a perfect image and why? Any couple of quick mm -hmm. comments? 
What time do we need to answer? Um, what what makes a perfect image and why? I would say if it speaks to the viewer. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's well framed and um, the ratio between the subject and the background is good. Okay. Okay. So we're getting a balance of right brain, left brain action. That's good. Any so other quick comments? If you can use a tool, meaning like composition, texture, form, and be able to show what it is, the creative side of it, using those tools to kind of. Okay. And you, when you say tools, what are you referring to? Like a uh, rule of thirds, oh, okay. texture, okay. Okay. A form. Okay. okay. And then using those tools okay. to uh, showcase whatever it is you. Sure. Like in this case, like the previous image. Yeah. Right. Oh, thank you. I thought you were going to be cruel and just drink in front of me. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, these are all nice technology, techniques, tools, things you can use. Yeah. The perfect image is one that meets the client or consumer's need and okay. he wants it. Okay. You've created the desire <clears throat> to want to have that image as it is. Okay. Different people are going to want different things. Sure. But if there is no thing in terms of client, I should say, there's, sure. you know, there's always a client. If you, do, if, you, if, you put it, if you put it in a drawer and never got it out, there's no client. <laughs> if you take it to PPA, there's a client. Yeah. Correct. There's five of them sitting there. How many judges are they using? These there's six judges and then one JC. And JC is kind of the referee. I know. So in case there's a brawl on the phone. <laughs> well, it really uh, makes you think and, 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 and puts you in different areas creatively. If you're a creative person and, 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 and you've seen something that you've never seen before, um, that certainly, uh, for me, is, is I, wouldn't, I don't know if I could call it perfection, but it's definitely pushing me. And uh, those, those are the images that excite me the most. So. Sure, sure. Okay. I think if, if, if I have an emotional reaction to a scene, I'm able to take that emotion and get it into my image. Okay. Be able to put that Absolutely. In. Nothing better than having a mother or grandmother cry of an image that I shot. But even if it's not a over. person, if it's something like sure. a sure. like those trees sure. and that wing, sure. an emotional feeling. Absolutely. This, what you saw, sure. you felt when you saw it, you can take that and get it onto whatever medium you're using. I think that's, that's right. Thing. That's right. I mean, that's what Ansel did with all of his uh, National Park images, I mean, and he's, he's the master. First of, all, first of all, I think most artists would say well, there's no such thing as a perfect image any Good. more than there's, you know, you talk to authors and say that the book is never Good. perfect. It's yes, just, right. You get to the point where, where if you keep making, you keep editing it, yeah. it's not getting better, it's yeah. just getting different. Yeah. So it's... Yeah. It, and so I, I would define the so-called perfect image as an image that says what you want it to say yeah. without any distracting or unnecessary, just unnecessarily distracting or extraneous sure. elements. Okay. And that has been manipulated to the point where additional manipulation isn't going to make it any better. Okay, sure. That's why I put it in quotes. And so I appreciate that comment, absolutely. And I, I, I agree. Well, I think as a photographer, when you look at any photograph, I think in your mind you have to create a story. Mm -hmm. And then you have to then see how to make that photograph tell that story. Right. And I think the quote unquote perfect is how close you get to telling that story. Sure. Yep. Yep. Yeah. What is that? What is that? Yeah. So, Albert Einstein. I'm a, I'm a math geek, a science, my degree is in physics, so I love our, Albert Einstein. You know, the most beautiful experience we can have is the, mis is the mysterious, the fundamental emotion which stands for, stands at the cradle of true art and true science. Um, one eye sees, the other eye feels. And so, in a nutshell, because we have both hemispheres of the brain, it really is the perfect combination, uh, the marriage of the left brain, right brain, the technical, analytical marriage with the creative hemisphere. And I think that's something that we have to kind of think about a little bit more.
Uh, it's, it's very important. Some people that are true artists, I mean, not true artists, uh, that are more on the art, art side, that they don't understand. They, they, the, the ones that are competent, that are, are true uh, gifted photographers, artists, they don't, they don't understand the mathematics. They know there, there has to be light and shadow. They, they know there has to be light and shadow. That's how they paint it. That's how they do it. But they don't understand the science behind it. Um, yeah, no, there's always, everybody's like that, especially in couples. Um, they don't know how to get it, but they explain it, but they know how, that, that it needs to be there. Some people like me, um, that's why I have people like, you know, Michael Barton and Tom Rouse and Wendy Vugo, because they're, they're like, all right, can you explain how my flash works and how high speed sync works and how to get this particular light ratio and the inverse square law, and I'm like, okay, I'm driving the equation, blah, blah. That's me, right? So I'm always constantly, I'm surrounding people, myself, with people that are more naturally like that. And they, now, at this point, they're like, okay, how does this all technically work? That, then they come to me, because <laughs> that's just how I'm wired. And now it's even. Before I was heavily, and now it's, as I've become, and now that I've got this, this thing called the master of photography, I just, this is just the beginning. I just know that, wow, I know how much I need to learn. If anybody thinks just because they have some degree, whether it's from a college or whether it's from PPA or whatever, that you think you've mastered anything, you haven't. Um, it, it, and it, 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 if people act or pretend because they're wearing jump around the neck or they, 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 they have really stopped growing and they're now on the dot, they're basic, basically dying. Um, and that's very, what does it all mean? So one of the things I want to talk about is now that we kind of wet our brains with all this dialogue, there's, it, it, there's a lot of language, right? But it seems to be all over the place. Um, and so we need a common language in music right, anybody into music, math, uh, musicians, there is a very uh, solid set of languages, right? The, you know, um, in art, telecommunications, I, I have to throw some engineering dweeby thing in there. I mean, communications protocol, handshaking, it all has to work. They have to understand each other. Culture, it all has, we need a common language. Um, um, and that's how we, that's how we speak when we do image critiques. Um, make sure we understand. If a, another juror on the panel, and I'm talking one, you know, that image is nice, I like this, but it, there's no communication, that, it, that, I'm not gonna do anything for that image to help it score what it needs to score. Um, do we communicate and convey what we do accurately? We need a common framework. So basically what we have is, there's, there's, I'm not going to say PPA's uh, um, 12 elements of a merit image is perfect. There's nothing perfect in this world, right? Um, but I, 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 I've seen that thing at work. Um, I've learned how it works. And I've studied a lot of other, you know, I've seen WPPI, I've seen other places. I know friends that have traveled to other, you know, Australia, to Britain. They have their own system. And I wanted to present this um, because I really do believe, you know, I, you know, the people that have seen this, that I've shown, um, talked about a little bit, it, it really does make sense. Um, and it really, whether you've been doing it for a while or you're just starting, it's very important and I feel like that's an essential growth. So 12 elements of a merit image, it's used by PPA print competition. Um, so that we have a common framework, common language, and how we speak about images. Um, and competition, I would say competition is a mis misnomer. Um, co competition implies there's a first, second, third, and last place, right, all the way down the rung. PPAs, um, it's called print competition or image competition, but it's really not a competition. The competition is with you. Um, it, and against this standard of excellence. It's not against me and Steve. Um, at, at a high level, um, ultimately, not ultimately, at some level, there are higher awards 
where it, they have to judge. Okay, these are all were amazing masterwork pieces, right? But at some level, it's like, are we gonna give this, you know, photographer of the year to Steve or me? Or Annette, that makes cute images. <laughs> um, they, at some level, but the, the really, where it really shines is, it, it's about personal growth and journey. Um, I, I, first year I entered, man, I was like, didn't know what I was doing. I, I'm so glad I had great mentors. And I, I look at now, then and now, just in the five years, again, I, I went from here to maybe about here in the first 10 years, and I'm like, I'm totally up here. Um, and it's, it's an amazing. When you look back at your images, and you're like, holy cow, what's that crap? <laughs> then you know you've grown. And I will also say that it's, we're always biased, right? It's like, oh yeah, my kids are always the best, or you know, I, you know, I'm good. But when you have other people saying, wow, your work has, um, Steve, your work in the last year has been amazing. There's some transformational growth, right? Or if I say, wow, and that you in the last two years, wow, amazing, that is crazy. You have excelled. Um, and your creativity, your image making, it's amazing. And that's really what about PPA system is about. Extending the creative process. Well, a lot of people think PPA is all about like, okay, kind of fit you in a box, um, but that can't be farther from the truth. That's how a lot of people learn. In fact, how does everybody learn? How does, how does a baby learn, right? By imitation. So you'll see a lot of imitation, you'll see a lot of you know, Bartonism, oh, is that a Barton? It's a flower, <laughs> it must be. <laughs> um, but, and that's fine, because that's how people grow. That's how, when you, when you can light a flower like Barton, that's amazing. And I, went, I, went, I think my second year, I, I shot a flower, didn't show Michael, and he saw, he just comes, turnstile comes and looks up, he's like, when, and he's, he, man, if he, if he sees a flower, he will mutilate it because that's, that's his thing, right? He's an expert. And if we're a, a wedding photographer, we're always critical, most critical about that, because that's the 12 elements. So look at them, I don't expect you to memorize them, but when we look at this stuff, impact, right? You know, technical excellence, creativity, and I'll go through these a little bit more in depth. Creativity, when I say, oh, that thing is amazingly creative, does that speak about type of image that is or if I say wow the composition on that image is amazing spectacular it's not the basic rule of thirds but look oh I mean there's the rule of thirds compositionally is you know uh, level 100 photography right there are so much more depth composition than just the rule of thirds right oh I put it in the PowerPoint great that is where you learn okay but the, the golden mean, there's, there's all kinds of uh, complex. And when you look at image like Tom Rouse's, you better be straight up that that thing is co composed perfectly in ways you cannot even dream. Just take about, you can, you can just talk about composition and do a whole dissertation on his image. And he does eight images every day for international pro competition. Um, presentation, color balance, we talked about color harmony, right? From, and that was just the matting to the key line to the image. But there was also language about um, the color harmony within um, some of the uh, images. Um, center of interest, lighting. How crucial is lighting, right? If lighting is not there, I guarantee you it will not score. You will not get a merit. You know? um, subject matter, technique, storytelling. We talked a lot about storytelling. After we got our juices talking about flowing, we're like, oh, that thing tells me a story. Oh, that client, that I told a story with that image and I sold my print. I, I do low volume uh, children's and family portraitures and people are like, you, they pay you how much for what? You know, um, and it's, I, I'm a very big proponent of storytelling, not only in my client work, but especially in my, um, um, in my uh, print competition, and I use that. So the first, I've been very fortunate. I, I again, I've grown. It, it takes me, p 
pe people sometimes a lifetime to achieve kind of that master of photography thing. Um, I did it, I, did, I got the, PP has another degree called a photographic craftsman, it's a educate, it's a teaching. Um, so I go and, and people invite me, I speak and judge and you get um, merits for that and you accumulate enough and you get a, a what's called photographic craftsman degree. I, I got all three, all, all two of those in two, uh, three years, which is really unheard of. Um, and that's because I had awesome mentors like that. Um, Michael will be way brutal on you. I mean, he, but uh, Tamara, I, I was showing Michael shuddering and saying, what do you think about this image? Like the first, second image I ever showed anybody. And he's like, what's your goal, Peter? I'm like, well, I want a merit, of course. He's like, then throw it away and start over. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and he said it. And Tom Ross, I mean, he, Tom, Tom is Michael's mentor. And Tom Ross is like, geez, Barton, you know, guy just showed up and you're like executing him. Um, but there's a, there's, I appreciate that kind of, that candor. I really do. I think I went through all of them. Let's go over a couple of them. Impact, sense of one, sense one gets one upon viewing the image. Does it evoke laughter, sadness, anger, some type of emotion, right? That's very important. Impact, that is super important. When that, it's, that image turns around, when you show it to you, when you show your image of, you know, little Kathy or to mama or grandma and they shed tears, you've done your job, right? The selling will go easy, right? There is no problem with that. Impact, very important. So we look at this. What do you think about that image? Cute. Cute? <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Does it have impact? Yes. Yeah. Yes. What kind of impact does it have? Several. What? Several types. But is that helpful to you me? Want to get <laughs> what you, is that? You want to get involved with it. Okay. You want to look at it more. You want to okay. see its details. Sure. Okay. You want I'm to get right. carried around the picture. Okay. You wonder what is up, what is down. You want to know why the texture is one place and not another. Okay. You want to know what the what the what the story is behind the okay. imagery. Okay. Anybody? You said what? Con the contrast, the lighting, the contrast. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And one more, anybody? It definitely, it doesn't, impact doesn't have to be back, but I don't know. I, I, you, impact could even say, I don't even like it, but I don't even know why. I don't even know what that is. And that's okay. And that's why we have seven judges to say, you know what? This is what it is. This, this is what I see. This is my interpretation. And then once you get a panel, it's crazy when... When the panel gets excited and they're starting to say, me, shot a trend, and they're saying, this is why I see that, the boom, boom, boom. And then they're like all over it. They're loving it. Then they're going down all the 12 elements. Does it have color harmony, composition? Does it have all this other stuff? And when it has, it doesn't even have to have 12. If it has, if it has three or four, five, five is rare. If you get three or four really solid <coughs> elements in that image, that thing will score high. high. Peter, yes. When an image is first judged, is a title given? Uh, always, yes. Always yes, okay. yeah. Title is always going. So, um, it, title will be called, image swings around, and it's, it's down to the specs. It's at, you know, F16, at ISO 100, at, I mean, it's, it's down to a science, how that lighting so system is done. Yes, boom, yeah, and it happens very quickly. Let's say if this, you know, but if this was called, I can't remember all the titles. Um, go ahead. When you say you give them, they see all the metadata and all the images? Oh, no, no, no it's, it's not. They just see the image, yeah. We judge what's presented before us, right? How they got there, you know, whether it's a, a thousand layers or ten layers, how they got there is immaterial. Nikon or Canon! We don't care. All right, that's. I don't care as a judge. I'm not thinking. Oh, Nikon. I'm not thinking Canon, right? I'm thinking the image, right? And so again, the Nikon, Canon, textures, lighting, whether you use Pro Photo or um, 
whatever kind of calumet or whatever lighting, we don't care. Did you execute, right, on the lighting? Did you execute on what you're trying to convey to your client, right? Technical excellence, retouching, manipulation, sharpness, exposure, printing, mounting, correct color. Doesn't mean, technical excellence doesn't mean heavy, that heavy manipulation, but again, it's what's traditionally um, dark room or any type of manipulation. It could be technical excellence, could be the heavy manipulation. Again, when we say, wow, that is, ex now you see what the definition is, and we talk about an image like this, okay? Maybe you like it or not, but to take that, 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 kind of put it in there, and there's a lot of artwork that was done to it. I mean, it's pretty well done, technically. Um, is that photos being judged? I'm not seeing the attack portion, right? I'm just seeing the bottom, if I was. Good question. Um, this was submitted, again, there's two categories. There's oh, photographic okay. open and master artist. This, she's declaring, Sandra Pierce, my dear, dearest friend, She's declared that this is an MA print. So she is trying to get her master artist degree, her artsy fartsy degree. So she's like, let me show you how awesome my painting technique or my multimedia. Some of this could be multimedia, right? They do their um, stuff and they're doing all kinds of stuff all over the print and doing all kinds of crazy heinous things that I don't get into. Um, and so, but that's, that's, that's what, that's, that's what it is. But you can't argue that it's not done technically. Look at the color harmony, look at the composition, look at, look at the storytelling, look at all these little pieces, right? You can't, whether you like it or not, I don't like it, I don't like it, it's too whatever. Um, technical excellence, right? Is there a question? Okay. Um, creativity. When you say, wow, that image is super creative, super well done, that, that speaks very loudly, right? Um, something that's original, fresh, external expression of the image, right? When we see a creative, uh, and I'm not, you know, we, we always make these comments, but you see a lot of newborns shot the same way. Mm -hmm. And when you see hundreds of newborns, boom, boom, pounding you in the face, you know, mother's delight, blah, 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 it, you know, it's not that original, fresh, you know, creative thing, right? It may still merit, but it's not, it, might, it may not score high. Now you see something totally different. It's like, eh, never thought that. See something like this. No, it's not a Barton. <laughs> um, I think this is an ad camera. It had an awesome title, but, you know, um, growing old together, something like that. Um, how, how the flower, ha one flower on the right has his, his arms mm -hmm. around, right? Old friend. What is that? He Old friend. He they got, right? So That's creative, nice. right? Okay, most people don't shoot flowers that way, right? You know, it's, it's, it, that's something different. You don't see sh flower shot that way. And that's what we're talking about, creativity. Style, defined by specific genre or recognizable artist. So we're talking style. Is this a Barton? That's a style. When he said, is that a Barton? Basically, he's recognized that. Is that a Tom Rouse? Is that, you know, again, that one with the, Peter you know, Peter, maybe. It's his style in terms of how it's printed and presented. Mm -hmm. um, not so much his subject matter. Um, in fact, I would say, I know many, many photographers that cannot shoot him, um, have done well, much better. And it's not the only point of, but he, they have done better than him in competition. Um, and there is something to be said about that. He enters every year, Peter Luck. In fact, in the 12 years or so that he's entered, so you enter four images at, it, international print competition. If you, all four merit, which is extremely hard, um, you get what you get called a photographer of the year. That's, that's, that's very hard to do. So if you enter four. Four, and you merit all four. All four are considered a master of photography. 
he's in 12 years he's done it once in the last five years since i've done entered in 2000 i've done it all i've done it straight five years in a row you go so, here. so technically no just kidding <laughs> but i but again he sold how that print for how much outrage yeah. yeah i mean do you want to tell them how you became the diamond photographer so basically, and I, okay, what, uh, whatever. Yeah, it's but whatever. so basically, what you, the, the way the judging goes is you enter four. Um, mm -hmm. If all four merit, you're considered a photo photographer of the year. Very hard to do. Now there's a second round of judging called loan judging. Those are the best of the best. They basically say these are the cr cream of the crop of the master of photographer images. These are the cream. And that's called loan judging. If, if, if you know, so there's degrees. So you can get one loan out of four, two loan out of four, three out of four. If you get four loans out of four, that's basically the yeah, that that's basically the top top dog. Um, you basically are what's called a diamond photographer, and that's what I did this past year. Awesome. And so it's it's crazy. I would that some pe that's a lifetime dream for many people that never. Gee, I I was shell shocked, and I don't do this. We'll talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, actually, I was going to ask Sybil or she wants Sonia. Um, are, are you going to talk a little bit tonight about your uh, focus in photography or like I can. personal projects? And are we going to see yeah. something tonight? Um, I did it because I'm trying to con confine this. And the, so I had this big master plan, <laughs> but we will talk. Um, um, I, I will try to get into some of that. Um, so again, style, we, talk, we saw this image. This is very um, uh, classic of Michael. When he, early on, he, sh he shot this. He, Michael showed me some of his early work. He, he's never shown anybody. He has way too much pride. He's way too competitive. But he showed me, and I'm like, that's yours? <laughs> um, but this is also, if you know my, Michael, um, that's his style. Um, that architecture one, that's mine. I, I've been doing a lot. So the first year, I'm, I'm kind of one of those people that needs to be an expert. Like, I, I'm a climber. I, I also climb. And so I needed to master rock climbing, ice climbing, alpine ice, uh, mountaineering. Um, and that's how I am. And so my first year, all portraits, all four, all four merited. Um, second year, it was fine art, um, all four merited. Third year, it was all landscape. All four merited. Um, last year, uh, last year was all architecture, um, and all all four merited, and then I went diamond. And I don't do heavy manipulation. Um, I capture in camera, crop, tweak, a little bit of stuff, and then I'm I'm done. I got life. I got children. I got business to run. I got I I I, I'm, I don't have time for that. Everyone's like, when are you gonna start your master artist? I'm like, oh man, I just don't have time for that right now. But that's, that's something that, um, uh, so that's kind of, I, I like to do it. So I, for me, it's, it's not, some people just enter, that's their go-to. They do landscapes, every year, landscape, landscape, because that's, they know they'll score, they'll know they'll, they'll do well. But that's how I stretch myself. I know that I can merit a, uh, a, a portrait that's what I do. I, and then how I, how I kind of bring back to, to, I'll answer your question a little bit, but architecture. I do all these crazy architecture and I went, I went diamond. How do I, so what? For me, how I apply that is it's not just, for me, it's all a return on investment. I do a lot of business. Uh, I actually speak a lot on business when I go to speak to different conventions. And um, everything for me is return on investment. That's where I came from business engineering world. And so Michael does this purely for to create competition and to challenge himself and to create art. Me, it's like, okay, I now I can create this amazing architecture piece. Now I stick a bride in there. Now I stick a family in there. I do this amazing landscape that scored super high. Now I know how to do landscape at that level. Then I take my awesome clients and put them in the landscape. And now compositionally, like when I'm thinking, when I'm like before even I'm shooting, when I'm looking, oh, 
composition style. I'm looking about all of those 12 elements, boom, rattling through my head. And it, it, when you practice enough, it becomes second nature, right? Wouldn't it be awesome if you just like, boom, that's what it means to be, and, I, and that's what it means to be, have it in camera. It's very important to get the basics. And you know what? If you don't, if, you, if that's not where you're at, that's fine. Get there though. Continue to pursue it and get there because it's very important. Um, go ahead. Maybe, maybe I missed something, but like uh, I, you're talking about, about the competition. Level, but yeah. Let's say you, you don't, you didn't score well. Let's say the average person doesn't come in and isn't driven, and they don't do well. What, where do you learn the skill uh, to put you up at next level? Is that on your own because you no. can criticize? Or you go through PPA and PPA says... You find push. someone like me, you okay. see, that's so what I did, that's right? That's resources provided that's right. by PPA. I get, when it's competition season, I get, email, I get emails and images all over the country so because I go and see. So from PPA members, yes. that really helps yeah. you That's the fastest way. Okay. That's the fastest way. I can, and I will give it to you straight. Some people, some old people, not old, don't take that derogatively. Yeah. I, I, I'm, don't, when I say people that have been in the system, some people believe that you have to pay dues before you can get it. When they say, you got your craftsman and master's in three years, no way, man, that's, that's you, they feel like you have to pay your dues. It's like, I paid my dues, you don't know how. Just because I got it within such a very narrow time frame, I, I, I'm gonna give it to you straight. I'm gonna tell you, it's like, well, well um, forget presentation, let you, I'll let, let you figure it out for the first or two years. It's like, no, I'll give it to you straight. That's how I roll. Um, because, you know, I, I had friends that did, that did that. And it's extremely tough to get a merit. I, I, I was like, first year I went three, four, four at districts. I was like frustrated. And then my mentor was like, are you stupid? Are you crazy? I mean, most people can't even merit. And you merited three the first year. And then at nationals, I sent a different image. And I went four for four. And I'm like, are you stupid? And then it's like, even Tom Rouse, like, I mean, that's crazy, and it's only because it's not a guessing game. It's very, I mean, I'm very scientific, I'm very process-oriented, but in terms of being able to get all those merits, uh, all those type of elements in that image, that's extremely tough and do well. And, but it, I will give it to you, I will help you. Um, um, that's what I do all over for many people. Uh, composition, choke up. You know, talk about internal framing, right? I mean, it's not just rule of thirds, right? You look at the different lines. Angle lines gives dyna dynamic, uh, dynamic, dyna dynamic impact to the image, you know? So it's, it's not your traditional view of a soccer player. There's a, has a lot of impact, but in compositionally, it works. Um, a lot of great things going on in there. Presentation, we already talked about the finished look, you know? Even this one is a little bit different. You look at that and like, oh, it's flowing, but look at how the eyes glow. Uh, eyes flow from down through the top of the mat to down through the bottom, where it just kind of holds you there. Um, if it l went right through the image, you're like, you know, basically you're, instead of holding your eyes inside the image, you lose, it goes straight out the image. But now it's there, and then you're like, oh, and then you're kind of going around. That's something that's very important, presentation, a different approach to presentation. Um, color balance, color, color harmony, you know, how the tones work together to support the image to enhance its emotional appeal. Again, this is amazing. I love this image, how it goes, the warmth. And you see the warm colors and then down in there, you go down to that leading line, you see the cool colors of the trees, the aspens. Um, look at a lot of the you know color balance even between the the presentation, the mat versus the key line. Um, center of interest um, points on the image where you want the maker to view, right? Uh, pet peeve of mine if I see these vignette. You see, there's a vignette around the image. They do a circle vignette, right there. Go right there to the image. No, that's just poor compositionally created image because you're forcing that. And for me, I, that's just me, it's a pet peeve because it's like if you can't create an image that gets your eye right where it needs to be, whether it's the primary or secondary or ter tertiary subject and keep my eyes moving between the different subjects, it compositionally in that one element, it's weak. 
Now, if it's be- okay or really well done in the other ones, I may forgive it, but, I, you know, I mean, um, it may sway it. Um, but, again, you look at all the leading lines, you see all the, you kind of see that guy out there right in there. Um, um, so, again, look at the lighting, look at all the, I mean, I'm just, we're just talking about center of interest, right? But you look at the li- leading lines, how it takes you right to that person with the faith. Hey, that's intentional. Right, you know, they could put the you know maker. I could have put my friend anywhere. Um, so look at the textures, right? Look at the shadows, highlights. Look at the depth, right? Um, look at the w- warm and cool colors um, between yours. the sky and. What is this? Yours, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, look at the um, warm and cool colors um, of the sky. The lighting, the use of control of light, very important. <clears throat> Friend of mine, Shelly. That that this is so overblown on. It's, it's you know, amazing image. <laughs> Simple lighting, right? But lighting could be, is a, a appropriate for the story, right? Um, if it's an athlete that's sweaty, you're not going to use a soft, you know, beautiful light like you would use on a baby or a bride, right? You're going to use some hard, you know, ugly light. Um, high contrast, um, subject matter, appropriate to the story being told in an image. So, you know, you look at an image like this, um, again, the subject matter, it's appropriate. The bike um, contrasted with um, the punk guy. Uh, technique, approach to use the craving. That's printing, lighting, uh, posing, capturing, presentation with media. Um, again, this is kind of a composite. Um, see that image? Yeah, that's not that image. No, <laughs> no it's not. Um, but it's super well done. But you look at the depth, right? You look at the primary subject. We all know what the primary subject is, how it's compo- composed, um, with all the different elements, right? Um, <coughs> And you look at that and your eye keeps, you know, it holds you within the frame. Storytelling. Again, image, images, ability to evoke imagination. Art is that each viewer might collect its own message or read the story in its own image. Um, you look at a, even a simple thing, right? And what do you think about the story? There's some, I, I look at that image and you're like, wow, I wonder what that story is. I might not even know. Right, but it, 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 it evokes emotion, um, it, it evokes something, you know, to think something. So, again, those are kind of a really crash course on the 12 elements. My whole goal of going through that process nothing's perfect, but I do, I'm not one of those people that uh, kind of spiel the company line because I, I, I'm just not like that. If there's some Nothing's perfect, like, you know, I, that's what I appreciate about Bill. It's like, hey, something needs to be fixed at Calumet. You let, you, he, he is kind of perfect. Not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I love that about people like Bill, and I'm like that too. It's like, if something's not right, let me know. And if I can fix it, I'll help you fix it, or we'll work on it and get to a better place. We'll grow, right? And so that's the whole purpose. How... Now that we talked about the 12 elements, hopefully, I mean, that's all on, not in this fashion, but if you go to the PPA website, you can see the 12 elements. You can start looking at it, and it's formed. Even if you don't enter a PPA print competition, that, that stuff, when you say, oh, storytelling, when I talk about storytelling, you can all under, kind of understand um, what storytelling. When I talk about composition, why that image is so powerful and strong, because of the composition. When I talk about color harmony, when I talked about subject matter, or any of these elements, those are tangible, whether it's photography, art, whether you're a newbie, or whether you've been doing it for 30, 40 years. It, it, those are common baseline things that we all need to know. Um, how, do, how did I get where I am today? Um, it's, it's, I always said I stood on shol- uh, shoulders of great mentors, uh, friends that really would do anything for me. They're happy when I succeed. When, in fact, that first 
um, that for 2009, when I first saw my print competition, I'm like, I would never be, that was just Indiana, Illinois. I was like, I saw the top 10 of that state, those two states, and I was like, dang. Mm -hmm. When you're competing around Ross, Barton, Sarah Johnson, Shigaris, all these names that you guys don't know about, um, they're amazing. When I see, when I saw a hundred image, and there is no perfect, hundred is the highest score, but there, it, it just means it's the highest. We're very clear to emphasize. It's the highest range. So there's basically, there's different categories. And categories is really what's matter. This is average. So when, I, when I'm judging on the panel, I'm like, okay, that's an average image. Then I pick my score within that. Above average, and then once you get, that's up to 79. And then there's merit, excellent. That's an excellent image because the comp composition, the har harmony, and the storytelling. Amazing. That's good stuff. Then above that is superior, and then exceptional is the high end. Ex high end is basically 95 to 100. When we punch in 100, we are not saying that's a perfect image. There is no perfect image. It's the high end of ex exceptional. Um, and so that's very important. Go ahead. Right. No, you are not. Please. Um, I was wondering, is there a gallery on the website where mm -hmm. you can actually view uh, past winners from different There's a book that's published. Um, but there's not a gallery. Um, unfortunately, um, so we just had districts and then um, and uh, IPC, International yeah, Print Competition. Print Competition website. Well, oh, the, magazine. Mm -hmm. yeah. the magazine will have some images, yeah. but it won't have the entire gallery. What you really need to do is go to imaging. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really, because when I took you around, right, I, you two were with me, when, when you saw those images, you saw, you know, what do you want, he's like, okay, I want to enter a print competition, what do you want, my first thing is, what do you shoot, because that's the natural tendency, right, what do you photograph, I photograph architecture, okay, then let's go and find some architecture images and I'll show you, um, if you shoot babies, newborns, I can show you, newborn babies of why these scored where, the way it did. And so there's levels of excellence. So it, it, once you hit scores in 80, you get a, a, what's called a PPA merit towards your masters. That's an 80. But you know what? My goal was never that first year I scored. Everything was 80, 81, 80, 81. I'm like, oh. And then it has to go through what's ins and outs. And that's excruciating. That's the mm -hmm. second review. It's like, tell them the judges, are you sure? <laughs> Because it, it, we're, our, our charge is to preserve the integrity of the merits. We don't, we don't, not everybody gets an attaboy, everyone's a winner, right? That's not how we roll. I mean, we, we, we continue to push and challenge people. And we, we love it when people ex succeed. Um, but then there's merit, there's excellent. When you get, in, my goal that second year was like not to be in the ins and outs. Because I had one image pulled from 80 to 82 down to 79. And I was like, ah, damn you judges. <laughs> oh, I'm being recorded, shoot. Um, but but that, that's her, that, that, that's hard, right? Especially because we're all so emotionally tied. But I tell you, put yourself out there, get other people. It, again, you will grow. It, it, maybe, how, how, look at it however you want. It's like, I don't need validation. I know there's a lot of people. And if you have any qualms or any issues, Talk to me because really, I, I'm not the person to give a company line. I know I've seen way too many people grow way too quickly, and their work is blowing away the competition, seriously, because of print competition. Um, and whether you're new um, or whether you've been doing it a long time, it, it's very, it's very important. Mentor mentee relationship. I, you need to seek out people that you trust, and when they tell, tell it to you straight that your lighting, you need to work on your lighting, your lighting's not good. Um, um, even for client work, if they say it's not good, then basically what above average, from 79 to 70, if you shoot out of camera, and you can show me that image, and I, I, will, I will give you a 78, I, I will get any, I will put it in the above average category, you're considered a professional photographer, okay? That, that is considered professional work. If, if, if you shoot in camera, right, and you show it to me, nothing done, 
and I, I score it in the above average category, you, that is work, considered work of a professional photographer. Okay, this is master, right? That's why we get this master of photography thing, right? Because you, you, do, you do need to work on some things, stuff like that. But the score is also, I will say this, score is also misleading because you get an average of six judges, okay? So a lot of times there will be images that score a 78 and just missed. They're like, oh, cloning track, you get anything like that, you're gone, right? In fact, if you get a cloning track, it'll probably even score lower. Um, but you get a cloning track or something that just missed a merit, you just fix that little thing and it, it, it could go 90, it can go 100 because that, that image was that good. There are 78s that will never merit. When I say never, I never speak in absolutes, never. <laughs> but <laughs> chances are it won't merit because there's, n there's not enough there. It's, it's, it's an okay average. In fact, I will not, I, I don't generally score in that middle range. If I think it's a merit, you're gonna get an 80 for me, 84 for me, high in the range. And if, you're, if it's not a merit, you're gonna get a 75. None of the 78, you know, oh, you just missed. Oh. Yeah, you just missed. No, you're going to get a 75. Now, the only, only times I do punch in borderline images is if it just, man, you just, you just missed. That, that, you just a slight oversight, you know, cloning track or, you know, there's, there's something that could be easily corrected in the image, and then I may punch in at 78, but generally. And then there's average and below average. Um, it, it really, it's a good bench, it's a good benchmark of where your image, and I don't know your images. This is totally, it's not like, oh man, I don't want to hurt Steve's feeling, you know, this image is like 69, below average, crappy work, but I don't want to tell him that. I don't know your images, and it's, it's anonymous, and it's, it's a really good system. Find mentors you trust. Um, they help create vision, goals. And they develop, help define the process and, you know, to really grow and develop. It's, it, it's the quickest way to learn. I mean, part of, you guys are already here, so I'm already preaching to the choir that you guys are already here. And you will know that if you hang around people that know what they're doing, right, and you respect, and they, they've already gone, paved that road, they've already gone that road, um, you'll get, you can get far. Um, and they'll continue to push me and challenge me. When are you going to start MA, Peter? I'm like, oh, God. And I have, I just don't have the time. I have two young girls, and I have a life, and I just don't want, I, I, plus it's a whole new thing, that heavy, that, not that I don't want to do it. I'd like to try some mixed media, multi, you know, painting type, painterly type stuff. It's a new thing, right? Learning all that over, and oh, that's hard. Um, but I got the right people behind me whenever I decide. Um, so next steps, where do you go from here? I'm all about next steps, right? You leave here, you go to a workshop, you go to landscape workshop, you go to the most, you know, go study with Jerry Johannes, blah, blah, blah. But you don't do, there's no next steps. Why, that return on investment, right? That's, all, that's what I'm about. That, that whole... That, that was this time investment. It cost, did it cost them anything here? No. Okay. It cost you nothing here, right? <laughs> Dollar, right? Yeah, but it, this is yeah. the time investment, right? You got to think about that. Even, and we're the worst photographers, right? We think, oh, I can sit here and Photoshop this thing forever. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, while you're making peanuts, you might as well work at McDonald's. Um, this is time investment. If you don't do the next steps, if you don't try to figure out where you're going, uh, it would, this was whole, a work, work, waste of time. Um, so get involved, find education. I strongly recommend PPI. I went to WPPI, and I'm not bashing WPPI, WPPI. Um, the biggest difference between the two, two major conventions, but I will say when I went to PPA, I felt home, right? When, mm -hmm. when I, when you, I, I didn't need, I, I didn't really know, um, Lot, some, several of these people. Um, and then when we just kind of started chatting and texting and doing all this Facebook type stuff. Hashtag. Well, and ha what? Mm -hmm. Hashtag? Hashtag. <laughs> um, and we're doing whatever, all kinds of heinous things. And then w w w once we met and we got, that's that connection, right? 
And that's the, by far for me, that serious connection. I like to have fun. There's all kinds, they both have parties, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the time, part, there's a good balance of having fun, partying, but also getting education and really getting serious about um, your, where you're going. Um, That's why I like to be Yeah, serious. yeah. And Michael Nova, I, I met the dude in Kentucky. I was speaking and judging Kentucky. And he, he's like, can you look at my images? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of very unorthodox, not really what I normally see. This is what I've seen. Where are you from, buddy? He's like, Chicago. I'm like, what are you doing here? Because <laughs> we have uh, affiliates in Illinois. Um, and he, he's made some great friends. You talk to him, and he, he loves mm -hmm. Kentucky. He goes there every year. Um, and they have some great people. Um, amazing. But, so, uh, get enter and I, again, I'm not, it's not a company line, enter PPA, PPA per competition. Uh, the stuff is just the tip of the iceberg. But I, you could spend a whole week studying this stuff. I could teach a whole class, a whole week class on this, and we can dissect, you know. Um, and if you're bashful and don't know where to start, find me and ask, start asking questions. I've already had several people here doing that. Um, learn online in your underwear? Not for me. I, I, I think that's, you know, I laugh about it, but, you know, it's, you can't do it by yourself. You can, but it's a long, long road. Rubbing shoulders and finding mentors and mentees. So basically, what did I do? Oh, and then I'll just talk about CPP. It's a certified professional pro program. And you know, I get on these, I, I'm rarely on these forums and stuff like that because until, I can talk about it, I can explain this, right? People's like, I don't need a certified, well, I don't need to be a certified professional photographer to be a professional. I'm like, I, I never said that, right? You don't, I, you don't need this, dangly junk stuff, medallions and medals around my neck to tell me I'm professional. I was doing fine, actually, right? But it took my thing to all I, levels that I never, in fact, 2013, three years into it, the, they cha PPA changed the whole grouping, and so now it's not regions, it's districts. Um, so now there's eight states in North Central District, in, including two Canadian provinces, Again, I, I'm not a, a, a prideful or boast person, but it just, it, there's, there's, the only way I can communicate how far I've grown is stories and, um, like this. I, I, out of those two states, I, in my, my, my right mind, I said I would never be top 10 of anything in this way. Those guys are kicking butt. Amazing stuff I could never do in my lifetime. That's what I said in 2009 when I first saw that. In 2013, Instead of two states, eight states, two Canadian provinces, I finished fourth. And there's some damn good people all over in those eight states. I mean, and to say that I would never be top ten and to finish fourth, and including, in fact, of the top ten that finished that 2009 year, I beat everybody except one person. That was crazy. You know, my, Tom Ross said, if you ever beat me again, I will beat you. Now. But he's so happy for me. He's like... He, yeah, I mean, but he, you know, I'm a, literally, I'm a fleeting star that will vanish. He, he rocks it every year, and he continues to push the envelope every year, and that's what I love about him. Um, he did do so well this year, but he continues to rock. He's one of the most creative geniuses ever. He, and then Michael is another creative genius. I, if you want to study, I mean, go find Michael Barton. I'm telling you, he has workshops. I'm telling you. He's on my list. He, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Those guys are hard to get in here. Um, the, those, these guys travel. I mean, a lot of us speak, and we get we get paid um, to go and speak and judge. And but I, you know, I can talk you. I can I can spend this hour to have normally when I speak it's like eight hours. <laughs> so trying to condense stuff into an hour is kind of tough. You want to just but, talk about Northern? Um, yeah, I can talk a little bit about that too. Um, so anyway, you don't need this stuff, but if you're new and you need to figure out where you're at, this, you will learn, even some old, some people that have been around, this certified professional uh, program, the CPP program, there's a written test, so you have to know what your theory, 
and you, there's an image submission. I challenge you, if you think you know your stuff, go, enter, go, go get your CPP, it should be easy. But you'll be surprised. I, I, and like I said, I, it, it doesn't justify it, but it, for me, I, d I went and got my CPP, um, more for my own personal satisfaction. You can, business-wise, marketing, you can mark, Peter Lick market, once he got his master of photography from PPA, he became master photographer Peter Lick. And you know that thing was broadcast all over the kingdom come in every part of the world. I mean, you know, um, he's a marketing genius, right? He's got P and that's, he's got brand recognition, right? And that's, that's why he can sell that stuff. I would say Martin, Tom Rouse, Michael Barton, I'd rather have their pieces than Peter Lick's pieces any day. Does he teach marketing? Who? Peter Lick. Probably yeah. not. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's a 5,000 hour book you can buy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And, but you know what? That's, that's the marketing genius, right? Right. Um, so fundamentals, again, if you don't, I want to go back to the basic. We talked a lot about things, but sports. Anybody play sports or have kids that play sports or have you played competitive sports? I mean, I climb competitively. I play volleyball competitively. Man, fundamentals are so important. They're crazy important. Same with photography and art. And you have to know the rules. It's a cliche, right? It's, it's everybody knows, oh, you have to know the rules to break them. Well, but you do. I mean, you do. Otherwise, and that's a mark of a professional. And that's, I've done it consistently over the year in terms of pre competition. But for me, it's not like, oh, oh my God, I can't believe I got that shot. That's amazing, right? That's not a mark of a professional. A mark of a professional is that someone that can go and consist, consistently execute. Execute, execute, right? And that's what you want. That's what you want to be, right? For a baseball player, man, if you're hitting 300, 320, you're a rock star, right? I mean, I mean, so it all varies on depending on what you're talking about, the context. But you need to be able to go out and shoot consistently. If you, you know, if you're shooting one great image every blue moon, uh, not good. Right? If you have to shoot a thousand images to get a couple good ones, not good, right? I mean, I, I, I'm a low shooter, right? And, I, and I'll, I'll say this, I, I used to be like, I, I, I got swung, it's like, oh, in camera, in camera, in camera. That's, and I got stuck in that mind, it's like, I gotta get it perfect, in camera. But then, as I, as I, this, is where I'm, this is where I'm at now, it's like, I, I was there, I pulled back from heavy shooting, come back, to really getting, visualizing, executing, and getting my shots in camera. But now, what I've learned from my, my mentors is, now you know the be part of, that's part of breaking the rules, is now that you know the rules and you, you can, that creative process is actually going with the flow and sometimes overshooting. It's like, let's go and see what that works out. Let's try different things. And it's that flow of that creative process. Overshooting, or if you, you, it looks like you're experimenting, it's like, oh no, that didn't work. But that didn't work by intention, right? Uh, with intention, right? So it's like, let's try that because we're in that creative design. Those guys are in total different realm. That's like how, and Tom Ross will tell you, I stink as an in-camera shooter. Well, he says that, but no, he doesn't. He's an awesome, compared to some of the other people. And he had, but that's, that's part of the creative process, to go and do that. It's like whiteboarding, right? You know, when you, when you get, whether you're in engineering or whatever field you're in, now you, when you're, my, my background is, so you, can, you have engineers that are kind of coders, or kind of um, implementation, those guys are even testers. A lot of my experience is in think tanks and a lot of R&D, heavy R&D. Um, and so when you're in that process, in that creative process, and you're whiteboarding it, I mean, that's where the creative genius type stuff goes in. And I just need to apply that to, you know, to mm -hmm. photography and art, because that's not my, I'm like creative in terms of like throwing out equations and differentials and all this other crazy stuff. That's, that's my, um, so pursue with a passion. And don't just study what you like, study what you don't like. Study is like, what is that? What is that? And then stretch. I loved the dialogue that we had because you guys started thinking, I, I can see it. And that's, that, that's the exercise I wanted to see. 
uh, starting to grow. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Five minutes, okay. Uh, I'm almost done. So anyway, so study with the mass, study the master artist, go to the art museum. Study with some of the great photographers, artists. And there's, I, I know, I have made friends all over the country. Literally, I went to Maine. Someone said, oh, hey, come, you know, come uh, sh uh, stay with us. I went to Nebraska to speak and judge, and they said, come and um, just stay with us. I, I literally have friends in every state of the country that would pretty much do anything for me. Um, it's crazy. And that's just um, PPA, my experience with PPA. In 10 years, I've not made one friend like that. That, I don't know, maybe it was a, it, it's a slightly different culture uh, a little bit, but I mean, PPA has been amazing. And these guys are right here in Northern Illinois. Um, I can mention, I would, I mean, Michael is crazy. He is, that dude is creative genius. Even his simple classic portraits, you think you can light something? You don't know how to light anything until you light something with Michael. I mean, he'll light stuff, you know, with anything. Um, I literally, he, that one year, he was like, he shot, I, I, sh I should show it to you, but we don't have time, sorry. Um, but <clears throat> don't limit yourself to photography art. Um, just a little quote from uh, uh, Wolf, Johan here. A man without should hear a little music, read a little poetry, see a fine poetry. Uh, seeing a fine picture every day of his life in order to that the world cares not only uh, may not obliterate the sense of the beauty which God has implanted in the human soul. That that was uh, speak a lot. Uh, do it better. Um, another thing, my my friends and I were all like, do it better, and that's maybe part two. If I come back, that was that's kind of what we're doing. What we're shooting based. Steve might say sh shoot something. And I'm like okay. I see that, I'm gonna one-up you, in a, in a friendly way, right? And we're gonna constantly push each other. That's what I do with my mentors. Do it better, we're like, we always tell them, do it better. You know, 100, do it better. <laughs> um, next shot is always better, lighting setup concept, the beginning of, this is the beginning of the creative process when you start to break the rules. Um, maybe that'll be a part two. I start to talk to Michael Novo, we start doing some crazy stuff. Oh, I thought this was, Funny, and then I'll close. Life doesn't imitate art, it imitates bad TV. Um, Woody Allen. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, even Mark Hauser, uh, he has images of you know Michael Jordan, Woody Allen. He, I, yeah, I became good friends with him. He comes over, come over to my studio, see me shoot, see me do this. He had a client over and he was doing, like, dude, I'm like, I made, literally, I'm like one phone call away from anybody um, that I could actually go and say, hey, Mark, you know, you know I, I want you to come and speak. This is what we're doing. Um, and he's like, come over, you know, and then we'll do stuff. And so it's 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 amazing. It's 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 an amazing ride. So um, yeah, that's all I have. Um, if you have any other, are we one couple quick questions? Are we good for that? Or are we done? She's in charge. Yeah. If we have it's up to you guys. If you have a question, if you want to leave, you can leave. If you have questions, I know I rattled on uh, kind of quickly towards the end, um, but. Uh, and then if you're going over there, I, again, take my brain. Um, and it's, I'm not the only person. I Go find you know, Tom Rouse, um, Mike Barton, or anybody that's involved with PPA. You're going to love all the 50 emails you're going to send tonight. Hey, if they do, tell them I sent you. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you mentioned the printing, the competition, the presentation part, do you actually have to frame it? No. It, it digitally matters. So yep. Yeah. 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 So nothing is you, an actual print. It's not an actual oh no, print. it's a print. print. It's digitally matted, and then I print it. Oh, I yeah. See. I yeah. print it. I mount it. I mount it on Sintra, and you know you can do whatever you want. Some people do it on Fine Art, Epson, you know, Luster Paper, whatever you want. I mean, you can you can mat you can physically mat it too. Um, I haven't done that. It's a little bit more complex because there's mm -hmm. some rules about that. Mm -hmm. Um, but you, you do, yeah, it's a physical print. Yeah. They do allow enter, digital entries now, um, go, sign at the times. Uh, but, um, but when I was pursuing my masters, I insisted that I, have, I print everything because I wanted that. It was part of that kind of like, you know, Ansel, it's like, that's his magic, right? And I wanted to do that. 
What size are the prints? Uh, the prints can be standard? the prints. Um, so basically, it has to be the minimum size is 80 square inches, and then the the long the biggest size is um, t long side is 24 inches, 24 by 24 by 20, 480 is the the long mm -hmm. side. But it can be anything in between. You can you can do a long skinny like this, mm -hmm. as long as it's 80 square inches. I think I just might have been to a We'll see. No. I, I, I do, and I, I, think I've, I, I think some of you have friended me. I'm very particular about who I accept. I, 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 I only, ex literally, I only accept when I've met that person. Um, that's just something. Um, that's just something I do. Mm -hmm. um, so, everybody. yeah. So mm -hmm. I, 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 I haven't accepted yet, but I, I knew some of them. Some of you guys were CPS, so I'm not ignoring you. But I've been kind of busy and crazy. Um, but I, that, that's kind of a rule too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm. Sorry. Yeah, we met before. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Mm -hmm. I felt like I just glossed over it, and it's, it's a very broad strokes. Mm -hmm. But if you send me images, if you're gonna enter print competition, that's my passion. That's that's where I've grown the most. I want to see you grow, and I will give it to you straight. I will send you an email, and I guarantee you will, you will, you will, your stuff, your artistry, your creativity, all those twelve elements, like it'll just spin, and you will be like two years, one year. Five years, you'll look back and like, wow, that's, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't believe I made that. And I, I believe, whether, even if you've been doing it for 30 years, mm -hmm. it'll take you, it'll take you to new heights, seriously. So, thank you again. Okay, thank you. All right. So, we meet at Sully's for the